Hey guys, this is Jack from FPV Academy in partnership with Lumineer and GetFPV. Now in this video we'll be going over the basics of hovering, the science behind it, how you can improve your hovering and how you can practice it in the liftoff simulator. Before we start this video though, let's touch on three quick points. In the description below you'll find three different links. If you do not have a quadcopter yet and you want to start flying FPV, there's a link that will take you to the exact quadcopter that I am flying in these videos. If you have a quadcopter and you want to do these lessons with the exact same gates and flags as I do, then there's a link for that too. Finally, if you need any help with your flying, whether it's building your quadcopter or need some mentorship on your actual flying, I offer these services too through the FPV Academy Pilot Support Program. Now you can find some more info on all of these points in the description. Now let's get started. Hovering may seem fairly simple to you, but in fact it's one of the most difficult things to do when learning how to fly an FPV quad. When you fly forward, it feels like you are in total control and you can swing the quad in any direction you like. But when hovering, this all changes. There are many variables that come into play when hovering, which then requires you to use all four stick inputs to get it back into position. So firstly, let's dig into some of the science behind hovering. When you power up your quad on the ground and apply some throttle, your props create an increased pressure bubble under your quad which lifts it off the ground quite easily. This pressure bubble is called ground effect and it allows your quad to actually bounce around on the ground with this pressure bubble under it. The bubble is only there for about the first 5 inches of lift off the ground and then it starts going away. You'll be using this pressure bubble under your quad in your first steps of hovering, but more on that in a second. Ground effect is also helpful for landings since if you bring your quad in quite fast and drop it down, the ground effect will make that harsh landing a little bit softer. The science is quite mind blowing. Next let's talk about your radio inputs. Firstly for the rest of these videos we will only be flying in acro or manual mode so make sure your quad is set up in this way. Also these videos will only be covered by flying in mode 2 which is what I found the easiest to learn on and is definitely the mode that I would recommend you flying in. All these lessons will be focused on flying in mode 2, so if you are flying mode 1 already, you might need to take your own initiative and figure out some of the radio inputs yourself. Now one thing to understand when flying in acro mode is that your quad will keep the same attitude when you take your hands off the sticks. Exactly the same as in this video demonstration, you'll notice that I roll my quad to the left or the right and then don't give any input. This will keep the quad going in that direction. So if I want to stop it from going to the left, I need to correct the attitude by applying roll in the opposite direction, beyond the center point. Like I just said, if you were just to bring it to the center point, the quad will keep heading in that same direction. You need to bring it back by applying input in the opposite direction. This is really important to understand, especially if you are used to flying in stabilized mode where the quad auto levels if you take your hands off the sticks. Now this is exactly the same for hovering. When you start drifting into one direction, you need to apply input in the opposite direction, but not too much since if you overcorrect the error, you will end up making a bigger mess. So that brings me to the final point. When you hover, your stick inputs need to be extremely small and very precise. Any quick input or sudden movement will make the drifting off to the side even worse. So now that you know the science behind hovering, let's get you up and flying. First, you want to make a quick change to your quad. Make sure that your camera angle is set to about 5 degrees. The closer it is to zero, the easier it will be to hover. Next, you want to make sure that your location is big and open. You want to check for any wind, and if the wind is blowing, you want to point the nose of your quad straight into the wind. This will make hovering a little bit easier. Next, you want to place a flag about 20 feet ahead of the quad, and another flag in a straight line about 10 feet behind the first flag. Then for this exercise, your goal is to keep the flags lined up with each other so that it looks like a single flag. By placing the flags in this way, you'll quickly notice if you start drifting off to the side. Now for the first exercise, you want to apply enough throttle so that the quad starts bouncing around on the air bubble. This will be very close to the ground, about 3 to 5 inches. Once you find your throttle sweet spot, you can pretty much take your throttle hand off the radio for this first exercise. Now if you are flying mode 2, as I mentioned earlier, you will only be using your right hand to control the roll and pitch. As I said, once you're off the ground, try and keep the two flags lined up with each other. If you move too far to the left, apply some roll to the right. If you notice that you're moving too far back, then apply some pitch forward. Don't even touch the throttle or yaw yet, only focus on your right hand. You might touch the ground and it may move your quad a little bit skew, but that is fine. As long as you can see the flags, then just keep going. Feel free to reposition your quad if it yaws too much and then start the process all over again. That's it for the first step in learning how to hover. Now for the next exercise, you want to apply enough throttle to be at the same height as the bottom of the flags. The goal of this exercise is to line up the bottom of the flag with each other and keep it in line as much as you can. This time you'll need to have both hands on the radio. Now when hovering a little bit higher off the ground, it will feel like the quad is very slippery. 
almost as if it's a marble in a large glass bowl. It is extremely important to stay focused and try pick up on the smallest error in movement. If you notice that you are slightly starting to move to the left, you need to slowly apply roll in the opposite direction since the longer you wait to correct it, the more likely it is to get exponentially worse. Stay focused, make very minor adjustments and try to keep the quad as still as you possibly can. Once you're able to fly one battery for about 3 minutes non-stop and keeping the tips of the flag lined up, you're ready to move on to the next exercise. Now uh, finally, the next exercise is simply just hovering from the bottom of the tip of the flag and then going up to the top of the tip of the flags. And then once you're able to do that, you just want to go up and down, lining up the tips until you become extremely proficient in hovering at different heights. Now hovering in one spot will teach you a lot more than what you actually realize. So don't get upset if you still can't get her after the 10th battery. This is a crucial skill in your progression as an FPV pilot, so you can never practice your hovering technique too much. Finally, before you go out and learn how to hover with a real quad, you want to make sure that you at least have some idea of what you should do. So for this, we'll be practicing to hover on an FPV simulator. Liftoff is a great simulator since you'll also experience the ground effect as in real life. So for this exercise, we'll be doing exactly the same as what we just went over. Before you start flying, you want to make sure that the camera angle is set on 5 degrees. This will make hovering a lot easier. Now this specific track is available to download on the Steam Workshop. Just search FPV Academy in the workshop and you'll find all of our tracks on there. You can then download it and add it to your track library. Now exactly as I explained before, you want to find that sweet spot on the throttle where you start bouncing on the pressure bubble and then you only use your right stick to keep you hovering. Now don't give any inputs on the left stick, you can take your hand off if you like. And because we don't have any external forces acting on the quad, it's a lot easier to keep it in one position. So what you would want to do is apply a little bit of pitch forward so that you can start the errors which you will be correcting. What you could even do is throw the quad in one direction and see how quickly you can correct that error and get it back into a hover. This will help you if a gust of wind comes along and throws your quad around. Now once you're able to keep the quad hovering in one very tight spot, you can move on to the next exercise. Now exactly as I explained before, you want to start hovering at the bottom of the flag tips, try and keep it there for a few seconds and then go all the way up to the top. Just line up the two tips at the top and then drop it down again. Just keep practicing this until you're able to quickly get both points aligned, move off course and align them really quickly again. Once you're able to do this, you are good to go. I can with confidence say that if you're able to hover like this in liftoff, you shouldn't have a problem getting off the ground in real life. Now thanks for sticking around through this entire video. If you enjoyed it and learned a lot, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. FPV Academy in partnership with GetFPV and Lumineer will be bringing out tons of videos that will help you become a better FPV pilot. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. This is Jack, signing off.